Hey everyone, Surreal Canine here. Uh, this is a tutorial video for the uh, second game in the Toho series, Toho Fulanroku, the uh, oriental story of the uh, demon ceiling, or something like that. Story of Eastern Wonderland. Uh, this game is the uh, first shooting game in the Toho series, although it's kind of different from the uh, usual. This was kind of Zune's uh, experiment, I guess, in uh, creating a game, creating a Danmaku game. He says he wanted to have so many bullets that uh, even uh, Dodon Pachi would be impressed, or something like that. I don't know. I'm only half looking at the manual here. <laughs> So you can kind of see the core gameplay uh, right here, uh, spoilers for stage 4. Uh, you control Reimu, uh, sitting on her uh, turtle Genji, who flies her through the level. Uh, you can shoot, uh, you can use bombs, um, and there are a lot of bullets. The P items here are power-ups, which... Uh, since the, the demo starts you off at max power for some reason, it's uh, not really clear how the power-ups work, but I'll explain it as, uh, as we go on in the game. The point items uh, are variable worth. The higher up you are on the screen, the more points you get when you pick them up. The max being uh, 51,200. Uh, that's also given a multiplier depending on the difficulty. Enemies can also sometimes drop bombs in 1-ups, but uh, don't count on it. You also get a 1-up every, uh, or you get a 1-up at 1 million, 2 million, 3 million, 5 million, and 8 million points. And uh, if you have 5 lives at the time, you get a bomb. If you have 5 lives and then 5 bombs, then the bonus is kind of wasted. But hey, it's a thing. Anyway, the goals for... Actually, I should talk about the story first of all, since it's kind of silly. Uh, Reimu returns from a uh, quote-unquote training session in the mountains, where she just kind of... Uh... Her main objective was to relax in the mountain's numerous hidden springs and experience the taste of autumn. That's straight from the manual there. <laughs> So yeah, uh, Reimu comes back from that, and uh, the shrine is wrecked. Uh, Genji comes out and tells her the uh, all the yokai and ghosts and stuff around the shrine are being controlled by someone nearby, so uh, Reimu sits out in search of that person. She also brings uh, two of her yin yang ones with her, which you can see there is the uh, options floating next to Reimu. Uh, those do different things but depending on your shot type. There are three different shot types in this game, and I plan to cover all three of them since uh, they do different things and your strategy might differ a little bit depending on your shot type. As of this recording, I... Um, I haven't managed to clear the extra stage even once yet, and that's uh, after about five years of having this game, or actually, actually it's more like four years of having this game. But yeah, the extra stage is hard. I think I might be close to getting it, but um, don't expect me to put up a video until I actually manage to be able to clear it consistently. As of... Right now, this project is mainly about 1cc'ing the uh, main section of the game. So yeah, that's my goals for Toho 2, Story of Eastern Wonderland. Hopefully with the uh, awesome commentary I give, and uh, hits straight out of the uh, translated Omake file that comes with the game. Uh, you'll be able to play this game a little better, too. I mean, I kind of started this project hoping that, uh, could, uh, get fans who were kind of interested in the series actually playing the games at an appreciable skill level. 
Because, I mean, hey, if you can play Toho better, you can play Toho better. <laughs> That's all there really is to say on that. Okay, let's get started. High scores there, by the way. Alright, first up, the high mobility type that doesn't use the yin yang. It's the fastest of the three options, but it's the weakest, also. Another thing I should note here that uh, you may not have known before is that if you uh, mash the Z button instead of holding it down, you shoot a little bit faster. Uh, this is something called double tapping in the uh, lingo. Anyway, you're going to start off with a bunch of ghosts here. First from the left, then right, then uh, starting in random locations. Try to pick up as many P and point items that drop as you can during this time. Then we have these guys that uh, shoot a spiral of bullets. Um, there are a couple of them. They shouldn't be too much trouble on easy mode. After that, we're going to have the uh, turrets appearing from the water. If you stay on one side of them, you can't possibly die from the guys on that side, so feel free to shoot, that, shoot them down and uh, get their power-up items that way. Then you have a couple of random fast-moving guys, and then the flower tank, which, as you can see, is kind of a pushover. Then it starts raining, and we get more of these fast-moving guys. I have idea what the heck they are. Anyway, you might notice that uh, Raymu's shot is getting wider and wider as she uh, picks up more power items. Her power bar there is also changing color. Um, you can probably do a lot of damage if you get really close to the boss, but um, if you're following this guide because you want to try and get through the game, it's not really a tactic I would recommend. <laughs> You can definitely get the highest scores using the uh, fast shot type, though, so uh, if you're one of those lunatic gamers who tries to get a high score, then yeah, I guess go for the uh, point-blank shot. Anyway, then you get these guys again, the ghosts. Watch out, because right in the middle of them, you're going to encounter these guys again with the spirals, and you might get shot. I've taken a few stupid hits that way myself. Anyway, then you get a uh, barrage of bullets out of nowhere that uh, heralds the boss fight for the level. This is going to be a pattern in all of the uh, PC-98 shooting games. It kind of goes away starting in the Windows games. Anyway, then we uh, run into Rika, who tells us that she uh, created all of the ghosts that are attacking us, and how is that not suspicious? <laughs> Anime fall there. Alright, so, uh, right after Rika says, ready or not, here I come, she's going to uh, activate her flower tank and make a spray of bullets. You want to get out of the way as soon as you can there. Otherwise, you're probably going to get hit. Anyway, then she does the uh, six shots that are aimed directly at you, and then these, this pattern, which is completely static, so if you just move where I do, you shouldn't have a problem. Once her health gets down enough, uh, she fires two lasers. As you can see there, I kind of derped with my uh, placement there, but if you go right in between them, uh, the flower tank should fall pretty easily. Alright. Marissa says, A thing to be careful about in Stage 2 is not to get confused between the items and the bullets. The bullets and the items will speed down as a similar speed. Watch it. <laughs> uh, Marissa. You're such a thing sometimes. Anyway, yeah. I would actually take her advice. You really want to pay attention to the bullets here, and, uh... Try to stay away from the back red background where the uh, bullets might end up uh, being camouflaged. Especially later on when they shoot red bullets. These bats will follow you, and I'm pretty sure in higher difficulties they shoot downwards too. Then you get more of these bats, and uh, they'll end up dropping a lot of point and power up items. I 
really like the song for the stage, by the way. You might have seen it down there, but it was called End of Day. Anyway, Noriko, she will shoot homing bullets at you. Um, the bullets are shaped like the uh, kanji for the word Norui, which means curse, so that's why they called her that. It's not her official name, she doesn't have one. <laughs> Don't you feel sorry for the poor mini boss? Then you got the uh, flying eyeball bats again. And uh, they shoot red bullets that go straight down. Uh, this is where you're the most likely to get hit if you're not careful with your, uh, if you get confused, as Marissa says. At this point in the stage, we get another wave of these uh, purple bats along with the eyeball bats. As the highly mobile shot type, you probably want to zoom all the way across the screen, uh, just killing all the enemies as they come in. The stage tries to fake you out here by uh, stopping the enemy ways for a little bit, but uh, if you stop shooting, you're probably going to get a bunch of bullets thrown at you, so just keep shooting. Remember, the boss only appears after the uh, bullets out of nowhere, which should be coming up pretty now as we get into the clearing. Good. Four, four, and then four, and if you move in that pattern, you will never get hit. Alright, uh, Genji uh, successfully blows Mayra's cover. Uh, they have a little discussion about... I don't know if Reimu's teasing her, or if she's actually... Man, I don't even know. <laughs> this is ridiculous. So yeah, Rain uh, Mayra says she has come to kill Reimu for her uh, power, and Reimu has no idea what she's uh, talking about. She's probably not even really paying attention. She's just kind of messing around. Sure, sure, fight the fight the. I don't know what that's a reference to. I might have to check the translation guide. Anyway, she's going to open up with a uh, with a C-shaped shot there. Um, Mayra's boss fight introdu will introduce for us two uh, main strategies for dodging uh, large quantities of bullets, and that's streaming and lames. Streaming is the act of uh, moving slowly to dodge bullets that are aimed directly at you. Lanes are uh, when she has the uh, multi-way shots there, and they uh, align themselves such that you can go between them easily. Like that attack, for example. She starts adding this pattern once she's uh, taken enough damage. She's really not all that difficult, though. Just watch out for the random shots and the uh, high-speed triple slash there. Once she's, once she's hit her final phase, she starts uh, launching these bouncing balls everywhere. Try to stay away from her when she does this, because the red ones in particular are really hard to see, because your shots are also red. Uh, I panic and end up using a bomb there. X is the bomb button, by the way. So yeah, when she's at the bottom of the screen, try to stay away from her until she moves back up to the top. And you should be able to get her just fine. That got kind of close, actually. I'm not really sure how I feel about that. <laughs> Mera gets away, and we move on with stage three. You weren't paying the least bit of attention, were you? <laughs> Crazy town. So 
Stage 3 opens up with an explosion, followed by a set of ghosts. Four on the left, then four on the right, then four towards the middle left, and four towards the middle right. And then we get a eight towards the middle, and then a sixteen like so. If they get low enough on the screen, they start shooting at you. These guys, I have no idea what they even are, but they look kind of like Shinyoku. Kind of. Anyway, they appear from the bottom of the screen like that. And then we get uh, this pattern, I guess. Their shots are slow enough that you can kind of slip between them, but the, try not to get so crazy going after power-ups that you run into one. The mini-boss here is a uh, completely static pattern, meaning that if you know where to stand, you can dodge it consistently every time. Also, if you double-tap, um, it'll go down a lot easier. You can also see that at max power, uh, fast ray move shots... Uh, or shoots a, a pair of penetrating bullets, which is pretty great, actually. So yeah, you want to try to always stay at max power. Easier said than done in a game like this, but hey, nobody said it was easy. Oops, and then I almost get hit, and I kind of the panic bomb. And then we get a huge cloud of these guys uh, that home in on you from the top of the screen. You're going to end up letting a lot of the uh, items fall just by necessity here. But uh, as long as you keep sweeping back and forth, you shouldn't get hit by them. Again, the stage tries to fake you out here by uh, opening up into a clearing, but it's not over yet going to get uh, another wave of these guys, along with the uh, red yin yang orbs, which are invincible, by the way. Although, even though they're invincible, if you shoot at them, you still get points for some reason. It's kind of bizarre. Anyway, then we get these guys, which you can dodge by moving like so. And we have one of the most annoying bosses in the entire Toho series, the Five Magic Stones. Um, I guess they're supposed to be the Guardians of Genmu Kai or whatever, uh, this is the quickest route to Rei Maden, which is apparently somewhere in Makai. Anyway, you can only damage the ones that are open. The, the left one, I think, always drops a bomb. I take a pretty stupid hit there. The right one will drop a superpower. I don't know if it's uh, which one drops which is random or not, so uh, I might have to take a look at the other videos. Anyway, then they start shooting these homing hexa shots, which you can kind of stream, but uh, they get really fast after a while, after you kill the first stone, so you kind of want to uh, move in a V pattern or a U pattern. Anyway, then the fifth stone opens up. It uh, does four simultaneous lasers, then a bunch of bullets, then four, uh, I think, random lasers. And then it does this, which is a static pattern again. Uh, these shots are aimed around you. Kind of weirdly, but, um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure how to dodge that consistently. It may be best to use a bomb. These bullets obviously you can stream. Those are kind of static. And then you have the laser here. And you have this wave again. Uh, it does a flappy thing with the bullets, and then it starts spraying them randomly. And at this point, the magic stone is almost dead. Panic and use a bomb again. It'll just cycle back and forth between these patterns. It doesn't get any new attacks after this. So just keep shooting it until it's dead. And try to stay away from the laser if you can. If one stops on top of you, um, it's probably better to use a bomb than try to zoom out of the way. Especially as fast laser. And yes, that was scary.
Hey, it's Final Fantasy VI! <laughs> Not really. It's Himorogi Burn in Violet. Alright, so we've got these guys flying in from the sides, and once again, if they get far enough in their patterns, they will shoot you. So, uh, try to keep moving. Now we get these weird blobby things, which I'm not really sure what's going on with them. They kind of shoot at you, but they kind of don't. Since it's a two-way shot, I wonder if you can dodge it by just uh, holding still. Might not be a good idea to test that theory, though. Then we have these birds, which uh, don't... Oh, I guess they do shoot at you, okay. And then we have these things shooting from the sides. If you stay to one side of the screen, you'll kill the one on your side before it gets a chance to shoot at you. But it does place you at risk of uh, getting shot by the other guys. As you can tell, stage 4 is pretty crazy. After another wave of blue birds, we uh, run into the mini-boss, which has five different patterns. Uh, pulling shots, uh, single shots, straight downward. Five, a four-way shot there, a series of lasers, and a, a random five-way shot. The lasers are kind of the most annoying, though. Anyway. She will drop a bomb if you manage to kill her. If not, she'll just kind of disappear. You can kind of see that I'm a... Uh, Approaching 8 million points pretty quickly now, that's going to be our final 1-up. Uh, besides the ones that the next mini-boss and the final boss drop. Here comes the mini-boss again. So, yeah. There's that one. Alright, and then we get more of these guys, and uh, we get the clearing, and then we have a, a, a staggered succession of 20 bullets, I think it's 20, which you can dodge right doing that. Mima shows up to taunt us, and then she uh, six Marissa on us. Marissa's main gimmick is the uh, is the orbs that uh, orbit around her. I don't think she can take any damage while she has the orbs around her. Uh, while she's using the orbs, she has five different attacks. Apparently. Alright. The, uh, once the dialogue finishes up here, I kind of uh, just left it in so you could read it if you wanted. <laughs> Mostly. The hour of my restoration. How very uh, cliche there. I'm not really sure what to think about that. There's Marissa! And there's the uh, first appearance of her theme, Love Colored Magic. It's pretty great. Does Marissa open up with a fast attack? I forget. Okay, no. She does open up with that, though. Alright, so she's going to, uh... That's her first attack, the, uh, circular attack. She, uh, just move in a circle to dodge it. Then she uh, starts shooting from her orbs, which they kind of turn into lanes, and then they kind of don't. Uh, then she uses Stardust Reverie, which are... The shots there are super slow, so you shouldn't have too much of a problem dodging them. And then she uh, pops her orbs and uh, does this.
Okay, this attack, you want to get in between the two circling orbs. Otherwise, you run the risk of either getting hit by an orb or getting hit by a shot. And neither one of those is especially pleasant. I'm kind of way too close there to, uh, to do a thing, so uh, I just kind of bombed there. If Marissa is really close to you when she starts uh, doing an attack, it's okay to bomb. And there's no real penalty for bombing. Alright. When all four orbs uh, go out, she will shoot a quick spiral like so, and then uh, contract the orbs again. Unusually for uh, this game, uh, Fast Raymu has the easiest time with Marissa, since... Uh, the other Reimu shot types are slower, and you're much more likely to get hit by an orb, since they move so quickly. Anyway, she uh, has some new attacks here after she's taken enough damage, like the uh, Star Spiral, which is, again, really fast. I kind of panic there and use a bomb. Anyway, then she does the thing with the... Uh, the pseudo wings, I guess. I kind of get pinned between a star and an orb there. Once she starts using this attack, you know she's almost done, so just uh, double tap and try to finish her off as soon as you can. And there we go, that's stage four. Alright, stage five is pretty simple, actually. Um, you get a barrage of enemies that drop P items. Uh, really good if you took a lot of hits against Marissa. It's also really good if you didn't take any hits against Marissa, because uh, by then you should have the uh, the full point combo for these. If you're a max power and you pick up a P item, they uh, get more and more valuable, up to 12,800 points. Then you have uh, this pattern of shots, which you can dodge by moving in a circle like slow. Like so, excuse me. Mima shows up, and uh, she judges your playing skill. If uh, you haven't taken, if you haven't used any continues so far, uh, she will fight you in earnest. Otherwise, she will quit after, before her uh, final phase, and you get the bad ending. Anyway, she says she's going to have her fill of your power, and that only a blood member of the Hakurei clan can use the orbs. This is all just a bunch of silly nonsense. I'm not really sure what to make of it. I mean, Zune has pretty much said the PC-98 games aren't exactly canon anyway. Alright, Nima says she won't hold back. She, uh, turns her cape into a pair of wings like Meta Knight. She takes out her moon staff and thus begins the fight. In her first phase, she has uh, these two attacks, which she does. Both are easily dodged. When her staff starts shining, she's going to ram you, so move out of the way. Once she's taken enough damage, she drops two super power-ups and a, and a one-up. Then she'll shoot those things at you. Then she does this pattern of bullets, which is kind of crazy. And then that pattern, if you uh, don't move during the first part and then move slightly during the second part, you won't get hit. Once she's taken enough damage, she drops some more super items. Then she has this attack, which is really hard to dodge with the slower shot types, so uh, feel free to use a bomb there if you have any. 
And then she does this pattern, which if you stay between the uh, shots of stars, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. I kind of almost get hit there because I'm a little slow to react. Once she's taken enough damage, she drops a bomb and two supers, and then she uh, tries to fake you out there with her uh, wing flapping shot and a random spray. The Hexa shot, by the way, is also kind of hard to dodge. Um, try to, like, judge where the middle of it is, and then, oh yeah, that pattern, that is insane to try to dodge. Not really sure how you would, really. It's just kind of, uh, skill and micro-dodging. Got this attack again. Alright, once she's taken enough damage, she uh, makes a text box, and at this point you're safe from any bullets that are already on the screen. She's going to enter her final phase now, and she gets a lot easier at this point. She only has two attacks, the uh, random spray and the uh, this attack, which is easy. Oh, three attacks, sorry. But yeah, two of them are really easy to dodge. This one is the only one that's really a problem. Just try to react to any shots headed for you, is all I can say. Ouch. Um, and then I get hit there, and then I kind of panic, but... Uh... Yeah, once she says, Ugh, that means you got her. Congratulations, 1cc. Now, excuse me while I uh, edit out part of this video, because uh, Zune does not want the ending spoiled to his games. So, in conclusion, I would say that while Fast Reimu is very hard to use because of her speed and weak shots, um, She's pretty effective against Marissa, and she definitely the, has the highest score potential because of all the uh, items you'll be able to pick up that you can't with the other two shot types. So yeah, I uh, place fifth here on my uh, high score list, which isn't too bad. Oh yeah, you also uh, unlock the extra stage by 1cc in the game. Again, I have zero plans to play as of, uh, until I actually manage to clear it myself. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And that's kind of all there really is to say on the matter. I will see you later with other videos, and then Toho 3. Bye-bye.